Gino Auriemma, a name that has become synonymous with women's basketball, is well known for his bold opinions and fiery controversies. Like I said earlier, they, they actually had odds that, you know, she was like third or fourth in the betting odds to be MVP of the WNBA. That's such a slap in the face to every WNBA player. It's unbelievable, right? This time, however, the Hall of Fame coach finds himself caught in an entirely different kind of storm, one that challenges his credibility and leaves fans puzzled. For years, Auriemma has been Caitlin Clark's most vocal critic, famously dismissing her potential in the WNBA and mocking her fans as delusional. Yet, Clark didn't just prove him wrong. She exceeded all expectations, emerging as one of the league's brightest stars in her rookie season. Her unforgettable performances amazed fans and analysts alike, while putting immense pressure on her fiercest critics. In a surprising twist, Auriemma has shifted from skeptic to enthusiast, showering Clark with praise so effusive it seems almost out of character. The college career that, that Caitlin had ignited a tremendous amount of attention. An incredible phenomenon that very rarely happens and it certainly changed the landscape, no question. Is this genuine admiration or could there be another reason behind this sudden change? Rumors are circulating that it might be linked to a recent investment he made, a decision that could have significant implications for both his legacy and Clark's future. What's driving Gino's dramatic shift? In this video, we'll explore Coach Gino's unexpected 180-degree turn, what he said, why he might have done it, and how Caitlin Clark fits into this intriguing puzzle. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Ready? Let's get started. That's the worst part about new fans. You know, they they have no perspective. They have no, there's no context. So they just, they just say ridiculous nonsense. Gino Auriemma has never been one to hold back his opinions, even when they put him at odds with some of the brightest rising stars in basketball. Among his most notable targets is Caitlin Clark, the fiery Indiana Fever rookie, who has faced some of Gino's harshest criticisms, dating back to her college days at Iowa. The delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the WNBA players by saying she's going to go in that league and tear it apart. There were actually odds on what are, like, she's third or fourth in betting odds of being MVP at the WNBA. These people are so disrespectful and so unknowledgeable and so stupid that it gives women's basketball a bad name. Okay, so the kid was set up for failure right from the beginning. It all began when Clark, one of the most highly sought-after recruits in the nation, made an unexpected choice. She chose Iowa over powerhouse UConn. Auriemma, whose program has long been the pinnacle of women's college basketball, reportedly took the rejection personally. But Clark didn't stop there. She returned to haunt him on the court. In the 2024 NCAA Final Four, Clark led Iowa to a stunning victory over UConn, solidifying her status as a generational talent in the eyes of fans. However, Gino remained unconvinced. Shortly after her college dominance, he unleashed a wave of skepticism about her ability to succeed in the WNBA. On a popular sports talk show, he mocked her fan base as delusional, accusing them of overestimating her abilities. She's not built for the physicality of the league, he claimed. She's not quick enough, and her game won't translate. But it's funny to, to, to listen to the, the fever management. Jamone about the physical fouls whenever any time I Jamone about the game being too physical, there's always somebody on that staff saying that I'm a something, you know, that I'm a so what goes around comes around. Ariema's sharp criticism didn't end there. He went on to question Clark's ability to adapt to the faster pace of professional basketball, highlighting her reliance on deep, high-risk shots. Those circus threes won't work in this league, he remarked, casting doubt on whether her signature playing style could succeed against stronger, more athletic defenders. Even Diana Taurasi, a UConn legend, echoed Gino's concerns, expressing skepticism about Clark's ability to transition smoothly into the WNBA. And Diana said it best. This kid's in for a rude awakening. Clark, for her part, remained silent, letting her performance on the court speak for itself, and it spoke volumes. 
During her rookie WNBA season, she delivered one stunning performance after another, averaging 19.2 points, a league-leading 8.4 assists, and 5.7 rebounds per game. She led the Indiana Fever to their first playoff appearance since 2016, earned Rookie of the Year honors, was named First Team All-WNBA, and shattered 62 records in the process. Her achievements weren't just impressive, they were historic. Gino's earlier criticisms quickly became a source of ridicule. Social media was flooded with memes juxtaposing his harsh remarks against Clark's highlight reels. How's that physicality looking now, Gino? Read one tweet alongside a clip of Clark sinking a deep three-pointer over towering defenders. Another viral post featured a collage of Gino's scathing quotes with the caption, This aged well, just like milk. With each game, the chorus of praise for Clark grew louder, casting an undeniable shadow over her doubters. This kid's on the wrong team. She's got the wrong skill set to handle the physicality of that league. And she's a rookie. Things take an even more intriguing turn in recent weeks, as Gino has transformed from a skeptic to a superfan. Suddenly, he's praising Clark as a game changer and an incredible phenomenon. But what's behind this sudden shift? That's what we're about to uncover. If you've made it this far and are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Now, let's get back to the action. So I love her. I think she's the best player. Forget I ever said Paige is the best player in the country. I think <laughs> she's the best player of all time. Would you have ever imagined Gino Oriema? The same coach who once dismissed Caitlin Clark's fans as delusional, now calling her better than Paige Buchers? Yet, that's exactly what's happening, and it's leaving everyone puzzled. Is Gino genuinely this impressed, or is there more behind this sudden wave of admiration? Let's take a closer look. He now describes Clark as an incredible phenomenon, a rarity that has undeniably transformed the landscape of women's basketball. According to Gino, Clark isn't just talented. She's a once-in-a-lifetime player who has revolutionized the game. Her signature deep threes and fearless leadership, once criticized as reckless, are now hailed as groundbreaking. No question, he recently said, it's remarkable how time and results can shift perspectives. Then there's her leadership, which has further cemented her as a game-changing force in the sport. The sign of a really, really good player is someone who can have an impact on the game when they don't necessarily shoot it. They can do other things to help your team win. This is the same person who once questioned her ability to embrace a team-first approach to basketball. Now, he's practically campaigning to put her in the Basketball Hall of Fame for her ability to elevate those around her. Gino even highlighted specific moments from her rookie season, praising how she doesn't just deliver flashy plays, she inspires her teammates to believe they can win. But that's not all. Her competitiveness takes it to an entirely new level. I think the one thing they have in common is their competitiveness. You know, um, the way they transcend their team even, you know, it's like um, there isn't anything they think they can't do. And you can tell, you know, Caitlin thinks there's not a shot that she can't make. There's not a play that she can't make. Gino describes Caitlin's fiery passion as a force that not only drives her own team, but also propels the entire league forward. It's the kind of fire you can't teach, he remarked, calling her the embodiment of the future of women's basketball. For someone who once doubted her ability to handle the physicality of the WNBA, this marks a significant turnaround. It almost feels as though Gino is attempting to rewrite his own narrative about her. The rest of the team starts to feel like that as well. So they're dangerous not because of what Caitlin does, but what somebody like her and fuses on the rest of their team. That's what's cool about it. And finally, the ultimate accolade, better than Paige Buchers. That's right, Gino outright admitted that Caitlin Clark has set a new standard, even surpassing his UConn superstar. If you know anything about Gino, you know he rarely, if ever, acknowledges anyone being better than one of his own players. This is a big deal. Fans of both players have debated this for years, but hearing Gino himself concede it 
that's next level. So, what's behind this sudden change of heart? Perhaps watching Clark dominate the WNBA convinced him she's the real deal. But not everyone is buying it. Here's the twist. Gino has a significant financial stake in Unrivaled, the new three-on-three -three basketball league that has been aggressively pursuing Clark. Coincidence? Maybe. But the timing of his glowing praise has raised eyebrows, making it seem as though he's trying to win over the one player who could determine the league's and his investment's success. Rival League is picking up players and they're getting ready to make a big splash in January with this league. Is Gino's newfound admiration genuine, or is he simply playing the long game to win over Caitlin Clark? Whatever the case, one thing is clear, this story is far from over. Up next, we'll uncover how Unrivaled went all out in their attempt to recruit Clark and why it ultimately failed. Caitlin Clark, arguably the most marketable star in women's basketball, became the focal point of an aggressive recruitment campaign by the upstart Unrivaled League. With millions of dollars and their reputation at stake, the league spared no effort in trying to bring her on board. Yet, despite their lavish offers and relentless push, Clark turned them down, and the aftermath has been nothing short of dramatic. She has decided not to do Unrivaled, even though Aaliyah Boston's doing it, Lexi Hull is doing it, Kate Martin is doing it, and despite all the rumors, and I'm sure the push that was put on her. But Clark has all the leverage in this situation, and I'm not saying she flexed it, but she was comfortable in, enough in her position to make the decision, and it appears that answer is no. First, what is Unrivaled? For those who may not know, Unrivaled is a newly launched three-on-three -three basketball league designed to offer WNBA players a lucrative alternative to playing overseas during the offseason. Co-founded by stars like Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart, the league promised six-figure salaries, equity stakes, and a fast-paced format tailored to highlight individual talent. With backing from high-profile investors such as NBA legend Carmelo Anthony, soccer star Alex Morgan, and notably Gino Auriemma, unrivaled, set out with one primary goal, to make a big splash in its debut season. There's a lot of investors in this league. One investor, you know, been trying to keep quiet about, you know, his investment in the league ever since his comments that he made about a young rookie. Pretty much, you know, had him in the headlines for about a month and a half. That is, you know, where he is, my dog. I'm here to tell you, he's part owner of this league. And who better to headline this new league than Caitlin Clark? From the moment Unrivaled was announced, Rumors swirled about her potential involvement. The league fueled the speculation, dropping cryptic hints on social media, including references to her iconic jersey number, 22. The hype reached its peak when they teased game-changing announcements during their roster reveal. Fans were certain Clark would be the face of the league. But when the roster was finally unveiled, Clark was nowhere to be seen. Of the 36 players announced, only 34 were named with two wildcard slots left open. Fans quickly cried foul, accusing Unrivaled of using Clark's name to drum up excitement without actually securing her. One frustrated fan tweeted, that was the most disgusting bait and switch I've ever seen. Obviously, they've tried to do everything they could to make the most of, to make the most of the situation. They tried to do, make the most of Caitlin Clark not playing by hinting everything and for like, and well, I'm basically making people think that Caitlin Clark was gonna play. So why didn't Clark join? According to sources, Unrivaled offered her a staggering contract worth over $1 million for an eight week season, an unprecedented figure in women's basketball. However, Clark turned it down. Her reason, she's been on a relentless schedule since her senior season at Iowa, transitioning directly into her historic WNBA rookie campaign. For Clark, Taking time to rest and recharge took priority over the allure of Unrivaled's glitz and glamour. The league's failure to land Clark has cast a significant shadow over its launch. Fans are skeptical, and analysts are questioning whether Unrivaled can thrive without the star power Clark would have brought. As for Gino, his investment in the league is starting to look increasingly risky, and when Clark officially confirmed she wouldn't be joining, his reaction didn't go unnoticed. Well, look like Gino Ariema. Could be the reason why Kayla Clark is definitely not joining the unrivaled three on three basketball league. When Caitlin Clark officially declined to join the unrivaled league, the news landed like a ton of bricks. 
not only for fans, but especially for Gino Oriema. As an investor in the fledgling league, Gino had more than just his pride on the line. Without Clark, Unrivaled lost the star power it desperately needed to make a big impact in its debut season. And Gino's reaction? Let's just say it was anything but subtle. We'll see how Unrivaled does without Caitlin Clark. They could still succeed, but we know what it would have meant if they had secured her on one of those rocks. Sources close to the situation revealed that Gino Oriema was visibly frustrated when news of Clark's decision broke. While the league pushed forward with hyping its roster reveal, the absence of Clark cast a long shadow. Social media buzz quickly fizzled, and analysts began to question whether Unrivaled could gain traction without the one player capable of drawing in casual fans. Losing Caitlin Clark is a massive blow, one commentator remarked. She's not just a player, she's a brand, and that brand just said no. After years of criticism from Gino, Clark's refusal felt like poetic justice. I know some of y'all were very happy that she's not doing Unrivaled as, you know, to stick it to the, the people who treated her poorly. And What does this mean for Unrivaled's future? The league's business model relied heavily on marquee stars like Clark to attract sponsors and viewers. Without her, the wildcard slots, intended as a clever marketing strategy, now appear to be a last-minute effort to fill gaps. Critics are beginning to doubt whether the league's ambitious plans, including six-figure salaries and equity stakes, can remain sustainable without a major star like Clark. I gotta ask you a basketball question. Yeah. I know that you work really hard in the offseason. You said yesterday you're always trying to get better. Mm -hmm. What's the thing that you're working on in this offseason? I think, honestly, besides the actual basketball skill part of it, I think getting stronger, that's what I'm focusing on. I'm in the weight room a lot, just building that strength. Obviously, it was hard going right from the college season to the professional season. You don't get to spend a lot of time in the weight yeah. room. So that's what I've tried to focus on the most um, here. And then obviously, a lot of things on the court. I'm always wanting to get better, and that's kind of what drives me, and I love it. I love getting to do it, and I feel very fortunate that it's my job.